Hey guys, it's Crystal Ann Compton. How are you doing? I hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are on the planet today. Sorry you can't see me. I just um, don't look that great. So, <laughs> um, I, But I did want to share a video with you from a recent broadcast that I did with my partner and also best friend, Trisha Carr, called Light Shine. And uh, we go up in the Lightworkers Lab periodically from time to time. And we do this uh, show called Light Shine where we talk about all things metaphysical. And in this particular class, we are actually talking about channeling and in specific I'm talking about the relationship that I entered into when I began well when I first met and then began to work with slash channel Arcturian beings and and how I applied that work to my own life and then Trisha goes on to talk a little bit about her experience channeling ETs and all of this uh, conversation came about because um, in a couple of weeks maybe three weeks October 11th 2020 we are launching the 2020 channeling intensive where we are going to do a very deep experiential dive into channeling and when I say experiential what I mean is we're going to be of course giving you the education on how to channel what channeling is how it works how you do it walk you through it give you techniques modalities the education we always deliver in our programs but we're also going to be um bringing in and channeling experiences and in specific experiences where students will be able to have encounters with different energies um, and different beings. Uh, for example, the energies being source energy, their higher self, but also the angels and the masters and the deva and ETs. And that's how we got on the subject of ETs. Just to set it up for you a little bit, if you're interested in checking out the 2020 channeling intensive, I will drop a link in the description below. And there's also a link here in the video. Um, but either way, enjoy this. And hopefully I'll see you soon, guys. I haven't been feeling the best these past gosh, couple of months, um, but I'm starting to feel better. So I'm hoping to come back full force to YouTube soon. But until then, enjoy this video. Bye guys. The aliens, like I yeah. love, if I could pan you, you, well, Trisha, you've seen it. Like I love um, learning about ETs, interdimensionals, mm -hmm. and uh, people have a lot to say <laughs> about interdimensionals. And a lot of that, if you ask me, is mythology and lore and a bit of storytelling. And it's based on experiences. Truly, the only way to understand interdimensionals and these, these beings of light that are connected to our universe, um, and, and many of which are connected to our dimension. Mm -hmm. The only way you can understand it is to truly experience it mm -hmm. yourself. And so I thought I would talk a little bit about channeling, like for the first time for me, I won't go into my Arcturian story because we've all heard that a million times. You're like a collective grown across the world. I won't go into it, how I met the Arcturians and what they were doing. But I will talk about the bit of channeling that came through as a result of my encountering them. Mm -hmm. And um, the reason I encountered them in the first place was that so that they could make me an energetic match for their frequency and their information and all the technology that is in alignment with them. And at the time of that encounter, that, that wasn't me. Like I was 3D human crystal with my own thoughts and my own beliefs and limitations, therefore. And so they needed to come in and work on me to some degree so that I could be a match for what they wanted to show me. But some of the first work that I did in terms of channeling with interdimensionals was around my own health, my own physicality. Um, when I moved away from Hawaii, I, when I left Hawaii, I was extremely healthy, very robust, a strong, strong last. Let me tell you, I moved to Chicago and heads up. Some places are just not an energetic match for you, your constitution, your body. Like some places they're just not nothing wrong with Chicago. But when I got to Chicago, um, it set in motion a decade and a half of terrible health. I mean, we won't go into it, but many mm. surgeries, comas, like a whole lot. Oof. And I became a very, very sickly person. And at some point in the early aughts, I was just like, screw this. Like, wh what am I doing wrong? Like what's happening here? And what can I do to get into better health and to strengthen? Let the weak say, I am strong. Mm. Like that's where I want to go. And so I entered, and after having experiences, I entered into intentional directed channeling around what is a sister to eat? <laughs> what is this? How am I supposed to sleep? What do I need to do to bring my body into alignment? And as a result of my pursuit of that and my intentional opening of that channel, um, I brought down some information about 
eating and um, eating specific foods. And it was based on vibration and spirit and in specific interdimensionals showed me the foods for me that were the highest in vibration and told me that if I ate high vibration foods, my physical body, which is constructed of a lower vibration, that's not a judgment, that's just the density of the human body. The physical body would have to respond to the high vibration of the food, period. And through me ingesting truly copious amounts of high vibration foods, my body would adjust and I would become healthy. And so I set off on this path of eating this way. And it was a, it's a whole thing. It's a whole Oprah. I won't get into it. Um, but I changed my health um, uh, dynamically. And I ultimately got the message, well, it's time to leave Chicago. Mm -hmm. And I went to Colorado. And as soon as I got to Colorado, within 10 months, I was healthy as a horse. I'd been eating this way for quite some time. I was looking real good. Okay. It's probably 40, 40 years old, 41 years old, but I was just so healthy and so happy. And that all came through my connection to these beautiful little blue beings that I met on the side of my bed and who I then opened a channel with changed my whole life. And that was practical. And then of course they started talking about traveling to different galaxies and constellations through your chakras, which intrigued me. And so I channeled some more, but that was the beginning of it. And it's open-ended, isn't it? It can be whatever it is that you, if you're curious, you can take it into a channeling session and you can yeah. ask the question, ask, and the answer shall be given. It's so true. And it is, you know, the, the, the facility to know it, it is that it's that sweet little nugget of knowing how to become mindful, which means putting down the tool of the mind or putting down the tool of the conscious mind, being in the subconscious, which the your subconscious is the collective subconscious, aka the universal mind, mind of God, infinite intelligence. And and then being there, then you know again it's that dominion because it's just one experience anyway. So there is no answer. We are, we are connected to all answers, all information, all experiences in every single moment. And what I just took away from your story is that channeling can make you sexy. Oh, I mean, I've been sexy. Okay. I've been around here, being, no, more sexy. <laughs> Definitely can um, uh, get your groove back. Absolutely. Just yeah. feeling better um, because that's the thing. Spirit wants us to be happy. God mm -hmm. wants us to be happy. We came here to do some fabulous things. Now, some of us did sign up for a little bit of suffering, mm -hmm. a little bit of re relationship trouble and issues that we would have to overcome. That's the nature of being human and life. But ultimately, the universe conspires for our good. Mm -hmm. And all good things come to those who love creator and spirit. And that's us. And so absolutely, uh, if, if we open that channel, there's all kinds of information for us to better our lives, better our pocketbooks, better our bank accounts, better our outlooks, our networks, our friends, everything you can think about, you can take that into a session and get all kinds of information from that. But I, I did want to ask you, Tricia, because mm -hmm. we're talking a little bit about aliens. Mm -hmm. Have you ever channeled aliens? And if so, who were they? Oh, yeah. What did they look like? What happened? Tell us. We want to know. For for sure. Well, you know what? Actually, I wanted to, if anybody is here, Patty, I know Patty McKay. You're so sweet. I love you. I know you know this uh, particular meditation that's on my YouTube channel, and it's a, it's a heart meditation, but it was channeled from Pleiadians, and people really like that. I don't remember what's in it at all, but I know people like it on my YouTube channel, and it's um, an example. It's a way to, excuse me, open up that portal for yourself as well. And Pleiadians are so heart-centered. Well, you know, right now, for the channeling intensive, I actually haven't told you this specifically, but I'm working with a council of 12, which is a common number of a council. And they are, nine of them are interdimensionals. They are, nine of them are beings from, you know, they're, they're star beings. And three of them are um, representations of other kinds of aspects of energy or spirit. And so when I work, when I work with interdimensionals, they, you know, it, it's a really cool kind of, it's, it's similar to masters in a, the sense that they are in the creation process. They're in the offing. Now, not that anything is, is outside of creation because archangels are, you know, in that archetypal process, part of the process, but they're in the flow of it. They're in the process of it. And our interdimensional parents and cousins and everything are the ones who co-created, who actually seeded this planet, you know, planted this garden of what we are. And so 
working with the with interdimensionals it's it's really working on the council of our creation of of this physical planet and it's such a labor of love it's so powerful so there's like this true power but there's also just this it's a satisfying kind of experience because there's technology there's there's um, philosophy involved that helps to satisfy the whole being. So it satisfies the mind as well as the spirit, as well as the body, because we are very interested in the tending to the body as well, because the body is the outpicturing of the fruits. It is the fruit that is growing from the soil that we so long ago put together and have never left and have never abandoned. Even though it may seem like we have abandoned, we truly have never abandoned. We are here attending at this time. And this particular channel is coming from an Arcturian experience to channel down, to bring a narrow band of communication so that it can go penetrate to the mind right through into the visual cortex, into the pineal gland, and drop that down into the feeling center of the heart where you are holding your oracle of truth, your narrator of what is true for you, the sensation of what is the delicate balancing point between mind, body, and spirit. And we cherish this experience that you are this triune being. And indeed, we say you are so much more than the triune being, but we celebrate that you are composed as a triune being. And we, in this particular message, are honoring the fact that we love the body, we love the mind, we love the spirit, and we say that one, together, this makes a full-fruited garden, and we stand in awe of the work that you are doing. Though there be many weeds, there is great fruit, and we hold the space with you, and we are ever in attendance, sending down the nourishment, sending through and up the nurturance that is just right for you, and so we ask that you Welcome in your counsel, welcome in the the sustenance and the nourishment because it is available to you at all times for the mind to satisfy, to quell the unsettled mind, to soothe and nourish the body. And we say that you are not made to be ill, even if you took into this experience some sort of exploration of how the body can be differently composed. You are not made to be ill, and that is a relative term. And for you, your wellness is a balance that you feel positive energy and frequency about. And we say in your emotional body, you are here to allow those emotions to flow and to flow out into the universe and become a perfected frequency by you releasing and letting them go. And we are welcoming your observance of how we see the light path that this planet is on and we are standing hand to hand shoulder to shoulder with you brothers sisters we love you we are here for you we give to you all that we have ever had pour forth from our hearts and our minds and our bodies we say one with you we are and thank you for your presence that was arcturian yes Oof, my heart gets pounding fast how did that feel? Did that feel like Arcturian frequency to you? Uh-huh. It felt like <laughs> yeah. a little bit, it felt like they were in the front as I kind of look at it, but they were in the front, but it was like layered, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's interesting that you say mm-hmm. that because um, when uh, I've worked with the guides, mm-hmm. you know, uh, when I first began to channel and I was getting all this information, I wanted to know specifically like, well, who are you? Like what's going Mm on? And all they would ever give me is the guides, the guides, but um, over time. And as I continued in the relationship, there were all kinds of different beings to include angels and masters and interdimensionals and beings that we don't have a name for, but um, they were layered in this way. They were kind of represented in their little squads and the different, like when we used to go to high school, we would have, you know, seniors here, juniors here, but we'd have like different beings and different um, energies according to their frequency. But in this mass of, of uh, beings, like light beings, like thousands will look like thousands and thousands of them, just the guides showing up. Yeah. And, you know, and then one group would kind of step forward and, oh, we're pulling down some cool, you know, Arcturian energy. And then another group would, would step forward and it would be more angelic or more personal to me and my, my specific path. So yeah, that's interesting. That yeah, was it, was, also. it was almost like a rudder, like of a ship, like the Arcturians were cutting the path. And then it was like, you know, a collective moving the energy. Uh, the the we pronoun is even though it, it, it also interesting well i don't know if 
I don't know what I normally or typically experience, but it sort of stood out for me right there that it was almost like one particular being or entity stepped forward and was channeling, uh, you know, the rudder, the, the, the right. Arcturian, and then all of the other beings. And they were all mm -hmm. sending their frequency through. And then there was like one being that was then just sending this this path down through me, which it doesn't even like with and uh, angel or arch archangelic energy. Sometimes it just feels like this big whoosh, whoosh, you know, or something, I think. And then with the, yeah, with the Deva fairy energy, it's it's just this playful little like, oh, what's happening? It's like there's so much happening. And, you know, there was one particular sort of forward facing, but it was almost like she was holding hands with all of her sisters and, and they were they were Stevie Nicks like dancing around. With, you know, so. <laughs> I would imagine like a Tinkerbell actually looking like a Stevie Nicks dancing around. <laughs> that makes sense to me. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. And that's kind of the thing too, is that they're all, um, light beings, meaning they're of the light yeah. and they come with, um, enlightened information, but they're their own different frequency. Like they're coming at you from different dimensional qualities. Some of them exist outside of dimensions and architecture altogether, mm -hmm. but they feel different. And unless you actually get into, um, the process, I don't want to call it the work of channeling, but like the experience of channeling, you really never get to say, oh, well, that's Celeste, or, oh, this is the Arcturians here, or, oh, this is how the Arcturians are showing up in a group.